You're listening to the Lawyer Lifestyle Podcast with Chicago attorney Dave Scriven Young. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor, which is the app that I use to record and edit the Lawyer Lifestyle Podcast. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast, so let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so that it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 212 of the Lawyer Lifestyle Podcast for May 29th, 2020. My name is Dave Scriven Young, an attorney from Chicago, Illinois, and I'll be your host. This podcast takes you on a daily journey to discover the key principles in the areas of marketing, sales, and leadership for attorneys. So we're continuing on uh, with John C. Maxwell's book, Leadership, and we're lo- talking about communication and specifically how we can make the shift from uh, directing people to connecting with people. The first element was humility and letting people know that you need them. And now we're going to talk about curiosity, how to ask people questions and why you should ask people questions. Now, I think a lot of people uh, fail to ask questions in a conversation with people when communicating with others for uh, a number of reasons. And uh, Dr. Maxwell goes through several of those reasons. Uh, but I think the number one is that often people don't want to seem stupid. Um, they don't want to seem like they don't have all of the answers. You know, one of the things that I do that, um, you know, I need to stop doing actually is when asking a question, whether uh, it's in a conference call format or an in person format, is I oftentimes find myself saying, well, maybe this is a stupid question, but, or, Maybe I don't understand what's going on here, but, and then I ask my question, and then oftentimes I find, well, it wasn't a stupid question, I didn't, this didn't have the information, and maybe it was a very good point that I was raising, or maybe it was actually a dumb question. But we have to remember that to connect with others, we have to um, assume that we don't have all of the information, that this person who's in front of us, or on the phone, or on a video call, they actually have information that we need to know. No matter what uh, the relationship is between you and this other person, because asking questions is part of connecting with them. They can provide you with information. They can satisfy or help to satisfy your curiosity. So some of the other reasons Dr. Maxwell gives for not asking questions are assuming that they have the answer. Uh, that they actually value what they think more than what others think. And I see that all the time uh, with attorneys, people who just assume that they have the answer, they have the right answer, so they don't ask for other opinions, they don't ask questions um, of others. People also don't ask questions because they prioritize directing others over understanding others. Again, they would rather just provide them with um, instructions on how to do X, Y, and Z rather than finding out from the other person um, you know, why they think a certain thing or why they think something might not work or will work. Understanding others is important. The only way you're going to understand them is by asking them questions. People also don't ask questions because they don't recognize the need to find common ground. Um, they're fine with having this maybe an adversarial relationship or you know, a supervisory relationship where they really don't feel like they need to ask questions of people. They don't need to find that common ground. But as a matter of fact, the best way to become a great leader is by finding common ground with the people who um, you want to follow you. And then also, uh, they don't understand... The, the, that questions actually help to manage expectations. And what he means by that is the only way that you're going to find out what someone else's expectation is, is by asking. And, you know, a perfect example of that is um, I do a lot of uh, advising uh, with this one 
uh, public interest uh, legal organization um, that I help out with. And what I found over the years is that the advisee from year to year has dramatically different expectations for what they want to get out of the program uh, to what they want from, uh, be, from me being their advisor. Some people simply want to just check the box that they had an advisor, maybe make a quick connection, and then move on. They only need to meet with me, you know, once. Some some people want the dramatically opposite view, where they want to actually use me as a real resource, somebody who can connect them with others, who can provide them with another uh, perspective, uh, because oftentimes... Uh, for this public interest organization, they're interning with or have a fellowship with groups that um, are more on the plaintiff's end or deal with more policy end. I obviously do much more of the defense side so I can provide um, the defense perspective and they're getting more of the plaintiff's side at their internships. So uh, they're getting the uh, diverse perspectives. So they might want to meet more often just so they can uh, counteract what they get um, in their internship with another perspective. Um, and so uh, that that's important. But the only way that I know that is by asking the question, what, are your, what do you expect to get or what do you want to get out of uh, this advising uh, situation? And people are usually very upfront. You know, they'll tell you, hey, you know, um, you know, I heard that there was an advising program. You know, I think it's great. I uh, just wanted to check in with you. Um, and then the other side, well, yeah, you know, I'm really interested in getting, um, you know, a, a different perspective and would love to, to meet with you a couple of times uh, during the summer, during the session. So, um, you know, so I can get that perspective. A and maybe you can introduce me to people and, you know, that sort of thing. So, you really need to ask questions of whoever you have in front of you as to what their expectations are. And once you know those expectations, then you can manage them. You can tell you either, hey, you know, I understand that that's your expectations. Here is what I can do for you. Um, and maybe you can help meet those expectations or you can manage those expectations. Uh, you might be able to say, you know what, I couldn't, I maybe couldn't can't help you with that but i can point you in the right right direction for somebody um, who might uh, help you uh, with that need that you have um, so managing expectations is important and you only can do that by asking questions a couple of um, two tips on asking questions especially um, sort of in a one-on-one -on -one scenario first of all you want to ask relevant questions. And the reason why I say that is uh, there's someone that I know, um, a friend who's, uh, whose dad um, loves to ask questions. But they're, uh, they're usually um, not completely relevant questions or questions that just weird questions that, um, you know, you don't maybe have an answer to on the tip of your tongue because it, it, it doesn't really, it hasn't really flowed with the conversation that we were having. Um, and so, you know, we might be talking about, you know, something that happened in college and then the dad might, you know, chime in and, and ask like, oh, what's, you know, what's something funny that you heard recently, which is kind of, I mean, it's a question and he might be actually very curious about that. But it's not something that I have necessarily on the tip of my tongue. And so in a social setting, you feel kind of embarrassed that you don't have an answer to that question. Um, and so you want to make sure when you're asking questions that they're actually relevant and flowing um, from the conversation that you're having. The second tip is to make sure that you're listening to the answers. It does no good uh, to continue to ask questions of people if you're not you're not listening to uh, you're not listening to the answer, and and then you can follow up, um, you know, on those uh, on the questions that you've already asked with appropriate follow up questions. Um, so the conversation continues to flow, um, and and it, it's it's difficult at times, and I, I find I found myself uh, getting into this where. Um, you you know you have to ask questions. You know you want to ask questions to 
um, understand this other person. And then you find yourself uh, formulating the next question while the person is talking, and then you might miss um, a very important thing that that person said. And then it comes up where, you know, you ask a question, and then the answer is, oh, well, I just told you that. It's X, Y, and Z. And then it makes like it, it makes it seem like you weren't listening, although maybe you were, um, or maybe you just forgot what they said. Uh, but it kind of it puts a damper on things when it seems like you're not listening. So a very important thing to do is uh, make sure that you're asking questions of the other person. You want to find common ground. The only way to become a connector, to connect with the other person, is by understanding them. And the only way to understand them is by asking questions. So I want you for your daily action item today is to think about what... What scenario have you had recently where uh, you felt like you haven't been able to understand somebody or come to a common ground? And is it because maybe you didn't ask enough questions? Maybe you assumed um, that you knew the answers, but actually the other person had a perspective that you needed uh, to understand. So, and, and how are you going to be committed uh, to asking more questions um, to connect with others? So I invite you to join in the discussion. You can leave me a voicemail by going to anchor.fm slash attorney DSY and hitting that message button. You can leave me a comment for me to play on the show or a question for me to answer. You can also leave me a comment or question on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at attorney DSY, and I'm also on LinkedIn on my personal profile. So let me know if you have any comments about this episode. Tell me what you think about this podcast or give me a topic you'd like to hear about. This podcast is on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, and Anchor, so please be sure to subscribe and rate and review. I also want to invite you to the next session of the Lawyer's Emotional Intelligence Book Club, continuing on with Dr. Chatterjee's book, The Stress Solution. So we have a little bit of a scheduling change for next week uh, because I have something going on on next Wednesday, which is when we usually do it. Um, I'm I'm doing a... A car parade for a friend's uh, son's birthday. Um, and so I'm out of pocket Wednesday night. So we're going to move it to Thursday, uh, June 4th, just for just for next week. And we're going to be doing it at 8.30 Central. You can find out more, uh, including uh, looking at the event uh, that I've listed there at facebook.com slash lawyers EQ. Have a great day or night, and remember to fight for the lifestyle that you want and become the rainmaker that you need to be.